Hey, true believers. Chris Matt coming at you today with Batman 399. Now, before we get into this book, just a quick update. So I'm going to have a comic review today, tomorrow, and then the following day. And that's going to be it for the comic reviews for a while, well, anything, because I know I, I put a, uh, what do you call it, a channel update thing on the page talking about the move, and it's it's been crazy because uh, I'll talk more about it when things are settled, but major life change, moving states, Whew, so a lot going on. So I wanted to sit down with y'all for one final time before uh, things get crazy, and then once things settle down again, then we'll get back into our regularly scheduled program. But with that said, Batman 399. This, I didn't realize we'd gone over the first part of this. This was, the first part was Detective Comics 565, and this is the next part. So the first one was August 1986, and this is September of 1986. So it was just kind of one of those little serendipitous moments that we've already gone over the first part of this book. <clears throat> um, essentially, in this story, it's a murder mystery, and it's about a jealous lover who kills the woman that dumped him for someone else and as you can we kind of get a nice little recap here at the beginning saying in the last issue of detective comics we witnessed a love killing is that you jim jim isn't precious george enough for you or have you already thrown george aside just like you threw me aside and yeah um the poor lady's head's missing there was no way the victim could be positively identified the apartment had been shared by Nancy Campbell and Mona Lamont, two flight attendants of, of the same body type. <clears throat> the corpse had been found by Jim Zawiatek. I, I have no idea how to pronounce that. Zawiatek. Zawiatek. Arriving for his day with Nancy, but... And then it talks about how Catwoman comes into the scene and finds out that this gentleman, you know, it wasn't his woman that was murdered. It was her roommate. <clears throat> and then we get a... Another rendition of the last page of 565 where this guy takes Nancy's head and or whatever her name was. I think this was Nancy. I think. No. No. I just said their names and my brain just went completely. This is Mona. Mona. He goes, you said you loved me, Mona. You lied. And you wonder why I hate your face. But now we'll see how he likes it. And don't get me wrong. Um, let's talk about who made this book. This is, <clears throat> in this series, this is Doug Monick, writer. Tom Mandrake, artist. Albert E. Guzman, letter. And um, Adrian Roy, colorist. Now, the reason I say let's take a look at that, because 565, it was Gene Colon doing the artwork for that issue. And don't get me wrong, Mandrake's work with all the colorists and uh, inking here looks great. Art team did a great job. If you go back and read 565, I felt like that book was more like, if you look at the art and then look at something like Batman Year Two, it's very reminiscent of like a McFarlane style, which Colonna, I believe, has been doing it longer than McFarlane, but, you know, I'm <clears throat> not that old. So I have to have some point of reference. But yeah, um, this one's okay, but... I like the artwork in 565 a lot better. Now, one thing I kind of want to preface here is I miss these style of stories. Now, you go and read... Now, let me kind of put a warning on here. I'm not bashing anybody, so don't get all twisted in a bunch, please. But think about this. This was a two-part issue and it's just about essentially a murder mystery and there's there are overarching themes like relationship with Catwoman Jason Todd's relationship where he's kind of taking a step back from Robin while he's in college and so you can kind of see how all these different elements sort of all flow together with that said I hate now where yeah this was a two-parter but still, it was kind of a self-contained story, and you, and you would kind of get flavors of an, of an overarching story. But now we go in and we read Zdarsky doing Batman, Scott Snyder, Tom King, and 
Let's see, Grant Morrison, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of lump Grant Morrison in there. Because it just seemed like as Batman R.I.P. started, and then we got in the new 52, Rebirth, it's like Batman can't just have standalone stories. To me, now, after reading comics for two decades, two-ish decades, you can't just pick up a book and then they make maybe two or three issues. Yeah, there are over like um, Nightfall, da, 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 da. but still there would be breaks where there'd be like maybe a three-parter or two-parter and you didn't have to read 600 books, but now, you know, Batman R.A.P. took forever. Scott Snyder, his arcs were awesome, but that's what they were. They were just these huge arcs with very few standalone issues. Like I really loved how we took a break during uh, Zero Year, or before Zero Year, should I say. And it was just that issue of Batman fighting Clayface. That was cool. It was a one-off. And it was uh, basically implicating Bruce Wayne as the villain. Of course, it was Clayface masquerading at his as him. But after that, it was just Zero Year. Batman Eternal. Court of the Owls. Uh, Death of the Family. And then Tom King kind of did the same thing, arc after arc after arc. And so you had to keep getting them and getting them and getting them to understand it plus tie-ins. This, it's just a two-part murder mystery. And so if you were just kind of curious about Batman but didn't really care, you could pick this up, read it, okay, say, okay, well, I read a Batman comic. Not really for me. Toss it aside. Or say, hey, this Batman character, there's something to him. I want to read more. Boom, 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 boom. And you could start diving in. And that's just kind of how I feel. There's just there's too many damn arcs nowadays and in, with that you start to lose a lot of like character development like don't get me wrong i love how like james tinium he did it right I, I have to say right now in my personal opinion fight me if you want tinium is definitely a defensive batman writer i love the way he that he would just introduce character after character and you gave a damn about a punchline ghost maker made Duke Thomas interesting. Um, who else did he introduce? Um, I haven't read all of his run yet, but the new chick with the bazooka that kind of reminds me of Jinx from League of Legends. I can't remember her name. But yeah, I did the first part of that for Fear State, and I'm already enjoying her. She's very meticulous and devious, and you like it. <laughs> and he reinvigorated Harley Quinn. But anyway, that's because he knows how to write stories, just like how J Doug... <sighs> You guys are going to make me go to the beginning again, aren't you? Because I can't remember his name now. Doug Monick. I should have known that. Feel free to make fun of me down in the comments. Anyway, back to the story at hand. I hope you all didn't mind bearing with me on that little antidote. But here, Batman has been monitoring this guy for months. And each time he keeps asking Selena to help him, to help him with pat patrols and whatnot. And again, what I like about this era of Batman is he was more vulnerable. Now when we read him, he knows everything. Like that's where the joke kind of came from that with enough prep time, Batman can do anything. In these stories, there was always an element of vulnerability. Why we see him doing what he's best at, in his mind, he's, term he's internalizing, why doesn't Catwoman love him anymore? What has he done? What is, what's changed? And it's killing him. And it's not necessarily messing with his performance but we're seeing a vulnerable side of bruce where he's trying to be the dark knight but there's that part of him that needing part there's another issue that i eventually want to go over but i cannot for the life of me remember what issue number it is i have it but if you guys remember the story i'm going to tell it now remind me and i'll review it but what happens is wayne manor's being what do you call it reconstructed i guess there's like a big hole in the ceiling and the book starts out as he comes off patrol, he's exhausted. And everywhere in the house he tries to go to get sleep, the repairmen keep waking him up or Alfred needs him. And so he, by the time he goes back on patrol that night, he's trying. He's, he's working through the exhaustion. And at the end of the issue, we see him as the sun comes up. He finds a, a little gargoyle nook to lay down in and finally falls asleep with a smile on his face. So we see that even though he's going to be Batman, it takes his toll. Now, Nightfall exacerbated that and, and showed it in a very grimy way, but this was more in a fun, like when comics were fun, 
way. And that's what I like about this is even though it's dark as shit, it's still good storytelling. <clears throat> so again, another little antidote. But this guy, he is surprisingly very sly and knows that Batman's watching him. Stupid Batman. Doesn't think that I know he's been watching me for a month. Even after he put away Tony when I hired his muscle. But no way I let it stop me. The lunch pail contains no food. Just a package, barely small enough to fit into a mailbox. So I eat cafeteria swill today. But first, one more stop before heading to work. <clears throat> but Batman's still not going to give up. Because, yes, even though we do at this time see vulnerable parts of him, he's still the world's greatest detective and is able to find the smallest of clues, which this is the stuff that uh, this gentleman, I cannot remember his name to help for the life of me, but um, it's the stuff that he used to, to pickle the head to make it look like a uh, voodoo head. Roy Spivy is the name, by the way. So anyway, he says it's not enough, but it's a start. And uh, they finally get the head, and it's just, everyone's having a hard time looking at it. He goes, the puddle I found behind the furnace. A chemical similar to that used by Javaro headhunters. Spivy's guilt is certain. And even during this time, I like how the artists and whatnot would always kind of, uh, I have not had enough coffee today, so I cannot think of the word. But they would exaggerate characters. So, for example, Bullock, he has that very fat, kind of 50s noir cigar smoking style about him. And it just, it works. See right here. Big old cigar, got that attitude. Now, I hate what they've kind of done with him, where he's sort of, well, the last that I read when Zdarsky took over, help me again. This is where I'm saying too many damn books, too many damn marks. But I remember when um, Snyder did the thing where Gordon became a Joker, or was Jokerized essentially, or the Batman who laughed Jokerized, whatever. Anyway, it was a good read. We went over that book. It was fun. But then you had to read, what was it, Hell on Earth or uh, Year of the Villains, la, 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 and then, uh, what was it, Perpetua and the wall barrier or whatever that was called and it just gordon slipped through the cracks because no one really knows at least i don't know where to pick up what the hell happened to him because all of a sudden he takes that leave of absence and now harvey bullock is the acting commissioner which i like that bullock is stepping up but i don't know what the hell happened to james gordon because while that's happening then tinian did that standalone joker arc where joe um gordon is going to chase down the joker and that's what I mean. It's too many damn books now, and it's so hard to keep up. And that's why, trusty watchers, I need your help too, because I can only read so much till I'm like, I need, I need a brain break. But here, we just see three of our favorite Batman characters working out the details of how they can pin Pivy for all of everything that's going on. And now again, we get a break from the action, the drama, the detective work, and we see... Jason and his girlfriend. I have no idea what her name is. But you see him along the coastline of Gotham, which goes, something wrong, Jason? Uh, uh. And then there's a moment. No, nothing, really. Now listen to this. While Catwoman is breaking away from Bruce, look what happens with Jason and his girl. I've just been thinking, Rena. Maybe we don't see each other every night huh damn that is cold and no one else but jason todd could really pull that i could not see uh dick grayson or tim drake maybe damien but he's too young still but i can see i can't see dick or tim doing something like this like i can never see tim doing that to stephanie brown i couldn't really see dick doing that to barbara or coriander no, no, but Todd, yeah, yeah. That, that, that lines up with this character very well. And now we get back to Bruce. And here, this was kind of interesting that Lucius Fox was running for mayor. I wish that they would have ran with that. That would have been cool back in the day. 
But anyway, he's like, I haven't really put a lot of thought into thinking of your replacement, Lucius, but it seems I'll have to give a lot of thought to replacements. This is the back cave. Apparently, Jason's still in love and definitely still neglecting his duties as Robin. Ironically, because I've taken up with Catwoman again, so now they're both gone. But even if I've lost her heart, even if we are both no longer lovers, as she said, I simply can't be in two places at once. I need some help from someone. And now the way Catwoman sort of breaks it off with her is he, she, Selena tells Bruce that there's someone else in her life. But she doesn't expound on that. He's just left to wonder who could have really taken her heart. But we find that it's a panther. And you can see that she still loves him even though she's pulling away. And just look at the way the art's done in a very noir style. The deep shadows. The over-exaggerated facial expressions. It just adds to the drama of the book. And again, I'm going to go back, and I've said this so many times, and I know you guys probably want to slap me in the lips for this. The documentary, Chris Claremont's X-Men, when Fox asked them how to make the X-Men work, and he said, you're focusing on the wrong thing, essentially. He said you have to focus on the characters' lives because you want to care about these people. You want to make them real. The action, special effects, that's all secondary. And that's why the first X-Men book or movie took off like gangbusters is because they took advice from Chris Claremont. Here, Doug Manny, Manic, I always get his damn name wrong. So guess what? We're going back to the beginning because I can't remember. Doug Monick. I know that. I just, my brain goes stupid. But anyway, these classic comic book writers that a good majority of all of us grew up with, they understood traditional storytelling. Whereas not all, but a majority of modern writers now, that's why the books, you read them and you're like, why do I not feel anything? And it's because they're just saying, here's character. Character does this, character has superpowers, everyone likes superhero. There was no reason to care. And again, this is just a two-parter. And you can kind of see the inner demons working within Roy Pivy. And you kind of, you, you start to feel like you're watching an episode of like NCIS or, uh, what's that one? I uh, can't remember where they always profile someone. I can't remember the name of the show, but you get my, my uh, criminal minds. There it is. You get the concept. I mean, you don't really get a whole lot of why he goes deeper, but you can see these inner demons that are tormenting him. And we do get some emotional catharsis between Catwoman and Batman. And it still leaves you with not all the answers, <clears throat> but enough to where if it's like your first Batman issue, you're going to go, wow, I want to see more of what's going to happen with Robin. I want to see more of what's going to happen with Catwoman. This is a really captivating book. And that's exactly what you get with both Detective Comics 565 and Batman 399. So I highly recommend it. Hope y'all don't mind the little antidotes that I went off, but I just kind of wanted to talk about how these older books, why they hold up compared to a lot of these newer comics that end up in the dollar bins more often than not. So if you've enjoyed what you've seen, please first and foremost support your local comic shop or wherever it is you like to get your action figures and comics. And if you've enjoyed this review, we really would appreciate it if you take a moment to hit like, share, and subscribe. Helps the club channel more than you could possibly know. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that fancy little bat signal bell next to subscribe, that was where you can upload content. You guys get notified. Come to the channel, and we love talking with you all and hearing your thoughts and feedback down in the comments below or our social media pages. And I'll make sure to uh, leave the links down in the description. So with all that said, hope you all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading, and happy hunting, everyone.